So back in 2015, we had several globalist institutions put out this simulation similar to Event 201, which was in 2019, put on by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, University of John Hopkins, World Economic Forum, etc. That just so happened to predict a COVID-19 pandemic months before it actually literally happened. Okay, yeah. Uh, And that was a whole simulation they run to game theory the whole thing before they presumably, you know, uh, before it happened, okay? And so um, the same thing sort of happened actually back in 2015. It was called the the Food Chain Reaction Game, and this was very similar to Event 201, except it was in relation to a major food, uh, food chain shortage and a food chain crisis. Uh, and it just so happens now we're experiencing some of these things that they laid out in 2015 in this document. And, you know, when you have the globalist institutions, the same old names that always pop up like the World Wildlife Fund and Cargill and the Center for American po- Progress and the John Podesta Group and all of this, when you have these institutions involved, these globalist types involved, You always got to go, hmm, it's so funny. Maybe they just have a magic ball and they're just saying, you know, uh, magic words. They're they're engaging in their druidic practices. Maybe they're really in touch with their chakras in the third eye or something weird like that. I don't really know. All I know is they seem to know what's going to happen before it happens. And I don't think it's any sort of intuitive knowledge they have. I don't think it's any sort of abilities or sort of something they're tapping into, I think it's something a little more nefarious than that. And so let me read to you from this document, which by the way, it's really hard to come across this now. It's really hard to find the food chain reaction game document itself and the actual full scale 47 page analysis you have to enter it into the way back machine to actually read it because they deleted it off of cargill because it i remember covering this in 2020 and you could click the link on cargill and you could look at the actual pdf but now if you do that it says account suspended And this is from their official website. So sort of like how Event 201 really went to expose the New World Order and the Great Reset Agenda um, because they predicted something that literally happened several months later to a T. It made people, you know, think, what's going on here? Did these people did these people have something to do with this? How could, how, why do they always run these like simulations right before things happen? And why do they always, why are they always able to predict it? It was very similar to the project for a new American sense, century back in 1997 or 98, where you had, you know, uh, Wolfwitz and all of these neocon types um, come out and say that uh, we need a new American Pearl Harbor to get us into the Middle East so we can, die, you know, uh, further put forth the, the Eurasian American hegemony and be a global dominance and all of this and, you know, force ourselves into Iraq and Afghanistan and Syria and Libya and all of these countries. The neocons were highly involved with that. You had, uh, was it Bill, Billy Crystal, um, you know, Wolfowitz, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, uh, the, the vice president there, what was his name? <laughs> you know, Dick Cheney, all these guys, the Bushes, highly involved in that document. It was like written to uh, the, the Bush administration, oh, I'm sorry, the, the, the um, Clinton administration at the time, and they were highly involved with that. And now, you, you know, people are really getting keen to this and they're saying, oh, wait a minute, why does this always happen like with these major crises and events you have them uh just like game theory or play it out or predict it or tell you what they're gonna do before it happens um you know it seems like there's something nefarious involved there and so now if you look at this document from 2015 they actually have a section for the years we're experiencing right now which is pretty funny right it's like they're game theorying this this um, food crisis that will happen in 2022 to 2024. Okay, and it's like 
Really? And so, and they, they, I just want to read you this because this is so significant that that, that they predict this. They even talk about how there's going to be problems in Ukraine and Russia and it's the breadbasket of the world. Like, how would they know seven years later that that would be an issue and further exacerbate, uh, exacerbate the food crisis we're having? It just, it's just so bizarre. You know, they put out this globalist document. It's just to a T. It's so perfect. So let's um, look at their simulation um, narrative for 2022 to 2024, written back in 2015. Significant droughts scattered across major production areas. We're seeing a lot of that right now. We're having a drought. I think it was in Texas right now we're having it. We've had several droughts the past couple of months and years in in, in California and all that. And uh, it's happening all across the world. So that is a thing that is happening uh, tremendously right now in 2022. Uh, What's the next bullet point here? Oil prices rise dramatically, reinforcing biofuel production. Oh, we haven't seen that, have we? Well, but, oh yeah, we have. I think that is uh, pretty obvious. Uh, oil prices is pretty high right now. I don't know about you, but it's, it seems like they're kind of high, right? Um, third bullet point, unrest and uh, migration intensify, panic buying in the face of uncertainty. You know what's happening at the southern border right now? Uh, it's pretty bad, and Biden's trying to make it a whole lot worse. So migration is obviously still a huge issue. There's no doubt about that. Um Panic buying in the face of uncertainty. We've seen a lot of that. Storable foods are actually hard to get, you know, especially from these like um, more prepper type of, uh, f- su- of, you know, food supply companies like My Patriot Supply and Emergency Food, whatever, whatever. You know, the freeze dried MRE type of companies that, uh, you know, a lot of these preppers went a little crazy and they're, they're hoarding a lot of that. Now, me personally, I'm not seeing huge panic buying at like grocery stores right now, but you're going to see that. Make no doubt about it. And um, so I think that's something we're going to see this year. Um, fourth bullet point, relief organization budgets are strained. Yeah, we're seeing that budgets are obviously in the United States. It's just horrendous right now. I can't even believe the whole entire like dollar hasn't collapsed by now because if you look at our US debt and our budget it just doesn't it just doesn't add up there's no way it's sustainable um and I think you're going to see more of this especially within the relief organization budgets uh, food prices increase from 262% to 395% of long term averages we're seeing that to a T right now, especially in grains and, and wheat and, and, and soybeans and all of the, these things, right? Um, meat, I mean, just it's unbelievably obvious. Uh, you, you can just go to the store. I don't think I have to show you the proof of any of this. You know, I like to show the proof of the things I say, but I think everybody just knows that, you know, like gas prices, food prices, like I don't really have to go on and on about that. So moving on into the document here, let's check out what they say. I mean, let's really look at what what's going on here because they even mention Ukraine, you know, and in in Russia and all of this. So I'm just gonna read like the first. Well, it's only a few paragraphs of the simulation, um, and we're just gonna read the whole thing because I mean, it's it's astounding that they put this out in 2015, you know. And these are the globalists, the same ones involved in. <laughs> you know, uh, the great reset, the same ones involved in the democratic party. And, you know, they want to create a new world order. This is not debatable, you know, and, and what it amounts to is you're not going to have food freedom. You're not going to have readily access to food. They want to turn the United States in the first world into like a second or third world nation. Right. And they want to reduce the population. This is something they're open about. This isn't debatable. You know, um, of course they'll say that, you know, this is for the good of the planet. This is for the good of, of humanity. Uh, but of, of course they are eugenicists, uh, and you know, their, their papers illustrate that. And I believe they're actually serving, um, a, a lower force, a lower vibrational, uh, force, like a, like an evil force. So that's just my opinion. But, um, moving on here and I quote, they say 
Stress continues to mount in the global food system. While 2022 turns without crop problems, food is still expensive and normal crop harvests are only large enough to slow the continuation or continuing rise of food prices. Public dissent continues in migration within uh, and from food importing Africa persists in spite of progress on regional um, free trade agreements exerting pressure on the African continent and Europe. Despite an intended increase focus on social protection by multilateral organizations, a lack of clear fundraising means that relief agencies are running low on cash and are challenged to uh, address rising a rising hunger crisis. Yeah, as bad as the food shortage is is going to be right here in the United States or in Canada or in the UK or any of these Western first world nations, it is going to be way worse in Africa and in India and in some of these other countries. I mean, you look at China, even China right now, which is getting to be first world. It's, it's not, I mean, it's, I mean, they're a high tech society, but there's still a lot of problems there. I don't know. I don't know if I would say they're, you know, they're on that first world standard of living yet, but it's already getting really bad there. You had um, major protests. There was videos of people, um, you know, uh, pushing their refrigerators out to their balconies and their apartments, um, and and opening the uh, the empty fridge as a form of protest, which is rare in China. They, they don't have a culture that's known to protest and and be um, you know a dissident toward a government. So worth noting. And then they go on here. Things turn worse in 2023. In the northern hemisphere, heavy spring rains flood the Mississippi River, disrupting orderly export flow. Later that year, contract disputes between labor union members and other employees result in a strike at a shipping at shipping ports in the north west Pacific, the Pacific Northwest. Both events temporarily disrupt U.S. exports, highlighting the sensitivity of supply chains in the global food system. World prices rise, awaiting supply relief, but more problems loom. China and India experience drought. Chinese scientists uh, report that declines in underground water are disrupting irrigation, exacerbated by po uh, policies focused on achieving self-sufficiency in rice and wheat. Heat and dryness in India damage crop yields, cause heat stroke in the population, and affect power production. Russia and Ukraine experience heat stress that reduces grain supplies hmm interesting is that a metaphor i don't know heat stress <laughs> yeah by the end of 2023 tight global stocks push food prices upward even further beyond the 2007 to 2012 peaks of 280 percent yeah yeah and that just seems to be happening doesn't it doesn't that just seem to be happening it, I don't know. Maybe they just have a crystal ball. Maybe they're in touch with the Akashic records of the universe or something. You know, maybe they're maybe they're talking to uh, what is it uh, like a genie in a bottle or something. Uh, the impacts register in many dimensions. <laughs> oh, maybe see, see, they do have the crystal ball, guys. Told you, told you. Uh, urban poor is the most vulnerable uh, ge uh, geographies. Um, oh. Urban poor in the most vulnerable geographies become increasingly food insecure. I think you will see that, by the way. I, th You know, so th just take heed to this. You know, they're telling you what's going to play out because I think, in my opinion, they're probably causing a lot of this. And I'm going to show you that in a second. We're going to watch a clip from Really Graceful where she lays out all of the uh, food processing plants that just so happen to explode, catch fire, just, uh, you know, cyber attacks, all of this, uh, you know, um, uh, ports being blocked, um, all of this stuff happening, dramatic, a dramatic increase the past few months, but it's really been happening in the past couple of years. Um, so I'm going to play that clip from one of her videos. And they go on here, uh, relief agencies issue urgent pleas for contributions. Uh, Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC members, uh, prompted by food import budget stress, organize strict production controls driving petroleum above $100 a barrel. Hmm, look at that, huh? Yeah, they predicted that to a T. And this is what, 2022 to 2023 to 20... Oh, wow, look at that. Hmm, 
the crystal ball guys in 2015. John Podesta sitting there in Comet Ping Pong just with his crystal ball, you know, just like, yeah, we can figure this out. We got it. We got it. We can see the future. Mm, I don't think so. I think it's more like these people are planning this and they just tell you what they're about to do and they have to simulate it here. They have to, they do have to game this stuff out because they want to know how to deal with this because, you know, as, as, as precise as their plans are, how they manifest in the real world n- are never actually exact as to how they plan it to be. So, I mean, we see that over and over again. You know, they can only gamify and plan for so much. Uh, it's all about practice. Practice makes perfect. So there was probably more down low, um, le- you know, more secret um, game uh, play here in simulations as to how this would play out so they could figure out how they would react to certain situations when problems came about. You know, it's sort of like a, a training mission. You know, you, they, the military does it a lot. You know, there'll, there'll be a scenario, like a war scenario. They'll be in the simulator flying. You know, the Air Force will be doing it, flying in the cockpit or whatever. And it, it'll be something like, you know, oh, this happened, then this happened. How do you how do you deal with this? Like, you know, this scenario occurred, and then this scenario, because all different things can happen. You know, it's the real world, you know? So it's like to, to actually be prepared for any possibility, you know, it takes a lot of work. You know, you got to give these guys some credit. You got to give them some credit. What credit do, you know? <laughs> They come out with this this 47-page document on you know, how to deal with this. And this is just the public one. This is just the public simulation they had. Because they got to have their lower globalist minions, the ones who aren't at the very top that don't really know, but are, you know, sort of cognizant of what's going on, saying like, okay, what are our controllers saying? Well, like, how are we supposed to deal with this? Okay. But, you know, at the top secret levels, they probably have like real intense gamification and simulations uh, as to how these agendas will play out. Like you think event 201 was the only simulation that they, that they had play out in their secret, you know, Bilderberg group meetings or whatever it is, a committee of 300, whatever they got going nowadays, you know, (laughs) the little meeting in, uh, uh, you know, underneath, um, uh, you know, Epstein Island or something like that. They, they probably had other secret ones, right? Uh, and they go on here in the uh, the document. Despite the United States and European Union uh, actions to reduce biofuel uh, f- fuel mandates, biofuel production remains steady, continuing to uh, aggravate the food balance. High crop prices accelerate land clearing in South America outside of Brazil due to strict adherence to its forest code and tropical Asia, causing climate experts to warn that new CO2 release will contribute to long term warming and here we go this is 2024 in 2024 crop yields approach normal across the globe except in the european union russia and ukraine where heat and drought negatively impact production they were pretty close on that one we got war negatively impacting production right now but it just so happens that you know these things are mentioned and that's what we have going on we have uh, a major decrease in production out of the the Russia and Ukraine area because of the war. Because I think there, there is a drought as well, actually. So they, they predicted all of this. Uh, panic buying and stockpiling by some importers prevents relief in stock levels and prices. Concerned about its future f- food supply, South Korea quietly negotiates long-term food access agreement with Ukraine. Russia is asked uh, by others to consider similar arrangements. Russia's people are agitated by higher prices, spreading rumors of a possible export embargo. The only relief comes from livestock systems, which plateau in most places and contract in in a few. Oh, they had a typo there, boys. You know, these globalists aren't as smart as they look. You see, even they have typos. Look, in, in a few... What idiots, you know, they, they're they paying some of these pe- people like six, seven figures a year to review this stuff and they can't catch a stupid typo like that. Um, overall, from 2022 to 2024, through high price uh, stimulant crop production slightly more, although high price stimulant crop production slightly more than the uh, weather induced 2% average annual crop losses, um, 
global de demand outperforms expectations. Stock in, uh, decreases from 19% to 18% of annual use. Farmers work very hard to keep up with demand, but do not overtake it. Despite increased international discussion about sharing food stock information to improve fruit food security, anxiety about food security increases prices by another 51% by the beginning from the beginning of 2022. Uh, rising to new records, reaching 395% of long-term averages. So this is talking about where people start to feel the heat. And then if you go to the 2025 to 2027 section of the document, we're talking about um, a lot of different things. They bring about more of the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, the solutions, which is, of course, as they say here, um, a more wa uh, closely watched and tracked food system. So they want to be able to track everything in the food system to be able to monitor it so that they can stop food shortages from occurring in the future. And then another thing is climate change, right? They want to reduce the carbon footprint. That what that All that means is less animal livestock and less meat for you. You have to eat the bugs. Um, because, you know, one of their main concerns is that like cows fart too much and they shit too much. And, and same thing with chickens and pigs and goats, right? So this is a huge concern for them when it comes to climate change. So they want to get rid of your, your dairy, meat and egg supply. Okay. They want to get rid of that. The best things for you. And, um, you know, a lot of their solutions is more global government, government, um, yeah, renewed global focus on climate change. That's one of their bullet points for 2025 to 2027. Um, World Food Program, right? So it's like the instead of, you have the World Health Organization, you have the World Trade Organization. They want the the World Food Program refunded. Um, yeah, so. A lot of these things have to do with all of that and keeping a huge aspect of this is, uh, you know, keeping closer track and surveillance and, and, and uh, a smart grid for your food system so they can fully control it and track it. And anything not in that system, you know, in other words, a, a good example of this would be, you know, all um, packs of... Uh, of of like like ramen noodles for instance or for j j just as as an, as an example all the ramen noodles uh you know each pack of it that you buy at the store will have an rfid indicator will be tracked we already have cr uh, crypto projects focusing on that like v chain right or vet right v chain in which it, it plans to track the entire not only food supply system of the world but the entire item system of the world all physical objects right right so even like your lamp right your uh you know if you buy a uh, a piece of art at the store or something a poster is you know everything so it's all gonna be tracked right and it's all for shipping purposes they say it's all for keeping track of it and, and um especially with food it, it can be helped for you know determining the expiration date of things and making sure it's all in line with that and if you're caught selling outside of that tracked and controlled and surveilled system of item surveillance and food surveillance then you will be deemed a black market participant and it will be deemed illegal and you'll have the food police the global food police right or the global anything police coming after you for selling black market items that aren't tracked into their centralized blockchain of control so so that's what it's about and, and animals won't be allowed, of course. You know, only soy, only bugs, only uh, Beyond Burger, Bill Gates meat, right? Only Soylent, Soylent Green will be allowed. You'll have to buy eggs and you'll have to buy, you know, <laughs> filet mignon on the black market, boys. So, that being said, let's play this clip from... Really graceful. That goes on to tell me this could all be organized. What's going on? In case you haven't heard, there's 
been countless food production facilities that just have collapsed, burned to the ground, exploded, planes crashing into them to a significant degree unheard of before. And it's really, really suspicious. You know, it makes you wonder, is this all being engineered? Are we being engineered into a new world order food crisis so they could create the problem and introduce the solution that they wanted from the beginning? It's a pretext. It's an excuse that they create to bring about their new world order. Check it out. This is from Really Graceful. Obviously, if you haven't subscribed to her, I suggest you do. She has a really good channel, way better than my channel. And this is a good video. I just figured she she just laid it out so well. I had to I had to uh, I have to play it for you guys. So that's what we're gonna do. In some ways, it's like the ship getting stuck in the Suez was just the start, just the beginning of all these recent supply chain issues. And really, it's only escalated from there. In the last six months, around 20 U.S. food processing facilities have burned down. I'm going to lay them out on a timeline for you so we can look at the data and decide for ourselves if something is going on here or if there's really nothing to see, we can just move along. January 12th, 2021, Fayetteville, Illinois. The Delhi Store Corporation, a processor of deli meat for military and commercial use, was destroyed by fire. No details on how the fire started. April 11, 2021. A cooker at the plant caught the whole Tyson poultry plant on fire. It went up in flames. July 26, 2021. Memphis, Tennessee. A three-alarm fire breaks out at the Kellogg cereal plant. Reports say fire started in the rice dryer. August 2nd, 2021, Hansville, Alabama. Fire damages Tyson-owned feed ingredients plant. The poultry meal plant received significant damage in a fire that was said to be sparked by animal byproducts in Greece. August 24th, 2021, Patax Meat Products in Cobb County, Georgia. A fire broke out at the factory causing severe damage. I've actually been to the retail store many years ago. It's a community staple, but it was a total loss. September 13th, 2021, Grand Island, Nebraska. The headline reads, Five Alarm Fire at JBS Beef Plant. The Grand Island Fire Department reported that the roof was on fire around 10 p.m. that night. October 20th, 2021, Tar Heel, North Carolina. A fire at the Smithfield Foods Plant, allegedly started by an employee named Latasha Biddle, who set fire to the break area. Well, she came back in two days later with a hammer and vandalized cars, screaming about how she was going to burn down the plant and shoot the place up before fleeing. She eventually turned herself in on an unreliable related charge. November 29th, 2021, Scotts Township, Pennsylvania. The headline reads, fire erupts at a meat processing facility in Lackawanna County. No further details. December 13th, 2021, San Antonio, Texas, $100,000 of fire damage occurred to a food processing plant where a cooler had caught fire. So now we're getting into 2022, January 14th, Lecomte, Louisiana. A fire started at the Cargill Neutrina feed mill in Louisiana and burned for 12 hours, reports of explosions seen and heard. January 31st, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. A fire tore through a fertilizer plant on the night of January 31st and continued into the next day, forcing thousands living near the plant to evacuate their homes and a university to cancel classes. Every household within a one mile radius was asked to evacuate because of the high chance of explosion. More than 6,500 residents were in the evacuation radius. All right, now here is where it gets interesting. If you look at the data starting in February, 2022, you're gonna to start to notice a trend of these fires occurring more and more frequently, which is why I wanted to lay all this out on a timeline anyway. On February 3rd, Mouston, Wisconsin. Wisconsin River Meats Warehouse was engulfed in fire, the old portion of the building a total loss. No details on how the fire was started. February 16th, Claypool, Indiana. The LDC said that a fire had broken out at the largest U.S. soybean processing and biodiesel plant. The cause of the fire was cited as undetermined. February 22nd, Hermiston, Oregon. A major explosion at a potato chip factory in Northwest Oregon resulted in six injuries, and they reported that it could hurt the supply of chips to the West Coast. Local news reports that a portable natural gas boiler exploded, causing a dramatic fire. And local firefighters said that it was the largest blaze in that area that they'd seen in a decade. March 17th, Jonesboro, Arkansas. A Hot Pockets and Frozen Food Nestle plant was shut down after a fire broke out in the afternoon. 
Firemen battled it all night, but eventually abandoned the fight because of structural concern. March 18th, Plainfield, Indiana. I wanted to include this in here too, like I've included fertilizer factory stories as well, because it all seems related. So this was a major fire at a Walmart distribution center, and inside were a variety of items, food, clothing, electronics, you know. This was such a tremendous fire that burned for days and no one knows what caused it. 200 firefighters worked together to put it out, and these were firefighters from 30 surrounding agencies that responded to this fire. March 24th, Belfast, Maine. It took firefighters from 10 surrounding communities to control the blaze that took over the McCrum potato processing plant. April 13th, Conway, New Hampshire. Firefighters battled a fire at East Conway Beef and Pork for 16 hours, managed to rescue the cattle even though the meat market was destroyed. April 19th, this is another one in Oregon at the headquarters of Azure Standard, the nation's premier independent distributor of organic and healthy food. It was destroyed by fire overnight. There were no injuries. The cause of the fire is unknown. April 20th, Leody, Kansas. The Nutrient Agricultural Solutions Fertilizer Plant caught fire. No further details. April 21st, Covington, Georgia. A plane crashed near the General Mills plant, which, you know, makes cereal. It's a global food company. There were no survivors of this plane crash. Um, not a lot of details are known about what happened. So that concludes the timeline. You know, I'm always interested to hear your thoughts on this. So, I mean, that's a lot. I mean, that to me seems a little bit uh, over the top. And, uh, you know, Really Graceful goes on to say here that she does like a search to see if maybe we're just noticing this now because food prices are high and this is always happening. And it is to some degree. I mean, like things do catch fire and like there are, but... It, you know, if you look at like news stories and you look at the general trends of everything, it does seem to have majorly increased the past year or two. So is something nefarious going on? I don't know. But when they're putting out th these documents years before that just so happened to pre predict to a T what's going on, you know, what what's going on now? It, it's crazy. I just want to read one more like summary of what this is. This is from Cargill, one of the sponsors of the Food Chain Reaction game. Okay. The game took the players from the year 2020 to 2030. Isn't that something? We all know what all started in 2020, and we all know what Agenda 2030 is. Why do these 10 years that we're in the midst of now seem to be so important to these globalist types? And they go on to say, as it was projected, the decade brought two major food crises with prices approaching 400% of the long-term average, a raft of climate-related extreme weather events. You know that's coming, right, boys? <clears throat> Governments toppling in Pakistan and Ukraine. Oh, what do you know? Isn't that something? Isn't that something? This is from November 12, 2015. And famine and refugee crisis in Bangladesh, Myanmar, Chad, and Sudan. Now, that's probably happening to a, to a large degree right now. You don't hear a lot about it because it doesn't affect you. Along with the World Wildlife Fund, the Center for American Progress, and the Center for Naval Analysis, Cargill was one of the, f uh, one of the food chain reaction organizers. The company was represented in the game by corporate vice president Joe Stone. I can't tell you the number of discussions where people came up to me from other parts of the world saying, we appreciate Cargill's role in sustainability. Sustainability. Or Cargill is so important in solutions for feeding the world. Yada, yada, yada. Um, and then it goes on to say here, unintended consequences. Over two days, the players divided into uh, teams for Africa, Brazil, China, the EU, India, and the U.S., international business and investors, multilateral institutions, crafted their policy responses as delegated, delegations engaged in intensive negotiations. And it goes on to say here, in the face of steep price spike with looming global food shortages in 2022 the eu at one point suspended its vir environmental rules for agriculture and introduced a tax on meats oh look at that hmm sounds like that's coming huh sounds like that's coming 
Written in 2015, boys. Yeah, they've been floating taxes on me. All you got to do is look it up, right? All you got to do is go to Google, Google, tax on meat, you. Oh, majority of West European citizens have appetite for a meat tax. Oh, that's out of tapcoalition.eu on January 25th, 2021. Taxes on meat to improve health and reduce VAT on healthy food. That's out of futureeu.europa.eu. This is out of Food Navigator. Meat tax. German, French, and Dutch consumers support price increase in taxes on meat. EU considers introduction of meat tax to fight climate change. That's on February 5th, 2020. Huh. Sounds like there is a little bit of an agenda here. Look, Euro News. Here we go. The stakes are too high. EU considers introduction of meat tax to fight climate change. Yeah. Well, there you go. Hmm, a tax on meat, yeah. Both measures were quickly reversed in 2025 as harvest went back to normal and tensions eased in the hypothetical universe. The most eye-catching result, however, was a deal between the U.S., the EU, India, and China standing in for the top 20 greenhouse gas emitters to institute a global carbon tax and cap CO2 emissions in 2030. Hmm. Global carbon tax. Let's see if anyone's been calling for that. Let's see if anyone's been calling for that in the past couple years. Global carbon tax. A proposal to scale up global carbon pricing. IMF blog. How to win support for a global carbon tax out of Nature magazine. Hmm. Global carbon prices pay for themselves while cutting. Yeah. So this is what we're talking about here. And um, yeah, they just they just know the future. They got a they got a crystal ball, folks. We've learned that a carbon tax is possibly in years ahead, acknowledged Stone. But before we can consider moving ahead with a measure like that, we must study it and understand it much better. We have to avoid sudden market distortions and unforeseen consequences. Yeah, unforeseen consequences like us kicking y'all out of office. How about that? Of course, these people aren't elected. They're globalists, but they control the people who are elected. The Bill Back Betters, you know, the Boris Johnsons, the Joe Bidens, the Justin Trudeaus, etc. Yeah, so that pretty much sums it up. There you go. I'll leave links to the Wayback Machine document so you can see it for yourself. Of course, if you go to Cargill and you try to click it yourself, it just says the account is suspended. Yeah, I don't know. They, it wasn't like that in 2020 when I talked about this in a previous video because I remember making the video and... I'm sure it's still up on BitChute at least, um, you know. So, that being said, drop a comment below, like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Gab and Twitter and BitChute and Odyssey and Rumble. And if you want to support my work, I have a Patreon link in the description box below where you can contribute to the channel if you believe what I do has value. It's been Press. Keep your head up, stay real, and no fear.